So good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, my name is Lior Aronson Daniel. I'm Vice Director for International Academic Affairs at BGU. Uh, welcome to the Kreuzlin Annual Memorial Lecture. Uh, Memory and University community remains extremely grateful for the tremendous generosity and the support of the late Irene and Hyman Kreuzlin. Throughout their lives, Irene and Hyman were dedicated to the success of the university, playing an instrumental role in both its building and development. Just a few examples of their many contributions to BGU community include the Kreitman Plaza, the Kreitman Building, the Kreitman School of Advanced Graduate Studies, the Kreitman Foundation Fellowships. The Kreitman School of Advanced Graduate Studies oversees all academic and administrative aspects pertaining to students during their doctoral studies and ensures that their needs are met at every step of the way. It has played a major role in the university's efforts to become a world-class research institution by attracting exceptional doctoral students from around the world. The Kreitman Foundation Fellowships support exceptional doctoral fellows and postdoctoral fellows in their study and research of the university's various faculties, providing them with the means to devote their energies to study, research, and professional development. It is through the vision and support of Irene and Hyman Kreitman that so many students have been successful in fulfilling their goals here at Ben-Gurion University of Omega. A wide variety of social action projects, student activities, and facilities have been made possible through the generous contributions of the Kreitman family. It is our honor to remember Irene and Hyman Kreitman here today with this annual lecture held in their memory. I am honored to introduce this year's Kreitman Annual Memorial Lecture titled Research Universities, Changemakers, and Climate Leaders. Our lecturer for today, Janet Ann Napolitano, is president of the University of California. Napolitano is a distinguished public servant with a record of leading large complex organizations at the federal and state levels in the U.S. She's the former Secretary of Homeland Security during the Obama administration and also held office at the Governor of the State of Arizona. Napolitano holds honorary degrees from several universities and colleges and will be receiving an honorary doctorate degree from Ben Gurion University of the Negev this evening. Please welcome Janet Napolitano. Thank you. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you today. I would like to thank the Ben Gurion University Board of Trustees and leadership team and particularly President Rafa Carney for inviting me to be here with you this afternoon. As was mentioned, later this evening, I will accept an honorary doctorate from Ben Gurion University, along with several other distinguished leaders and academics. Receiving such an honor from any university is a wonderful experience, but receiving it from an institution like Ben Gurion University is a special privilege and an honor I am truly grateful for. At the University of California, we have spent the last several months celebrating our university's 150th year anniversary, our sesquicentennial. It's always a hard word to pronounce. This occasion has prompted us to reflect on the University of California's rich history, its accomplishments, and its ongoing role in shaping and supporting the state of California, the United States, and the world at large. There is no doubt that the University of California has been instrumental in California's success and California is now the fifth largest economy in the world. Nurturing its success from nurturing the state's $45 billion agricultural industry to training most of California's healthcare professionals to its role in fueling the tech boom in Silicon Valley. UC is the reason we have wetsuits, the internet, a hepatitis B vaccine, and some of the best wine, citrus, and strawberries in the world. Here at Ben Gurion University, the commitment to research and education 
that benefits the public good is equally clear. The University of the Negev has helped the surrounding communities flourish for almost 50 years. You have forged important partnerships with ent entities within and outside of Israel. You have opened your doors to those not traditionally served by higher education institutions. You have pursued new knowledge and discovered research solutions to improve lives here in the desert and beyond. And you have done so most recently under the dynamic and wonderful leadership of Ben-Gurion's first woman president, Dr. Rivka Carmi. So thank you. Keep that deserve a round of applause. Indeed, the University of California and Ben-Gurion University share much in common. They are both epicenters of academic excellence and research innovation. They both serve as engines of social mobility and educational opportunity. They promote economic growth and support job creation. These efforts by both institutions to reach beyond the boundaries of our campuses represent the evolving role research universities are called on to play today. Our job is not only to educate, it is also to push the boundaries of what's possible and find ways to make the world a better, more equitable, more sustainable place for those who follow us. Now more than ever, Ben-Gurion University, the University of California, and other higher education institutions around the globe must lead the way together in pursuing answers and creating solutions for the world's toughest problems. Perhaps the greatest challenge of our time is one that we have kicked down the road for decades. We have politicized it endlessly. And in some countries, we continue to debate its merits despite clear scientific findings. That challenge, of course, is climate change. From the perspective of a university president, I worry about climate change because it is my job to worry about the future, about the kind of world we will leave behind for the next generation and the generation after that. And as a former Secretary of Homeland Security in the Obama administration, I worry about climate change because I view it as a grave security risk. And I'm not the only one. Three years ago, then National Security Advisor Susan Rice characterized climate change as, quote, an advancing menace, close quote, and warned that, quote, we are on a collision course with climate impacts that have inescapable implications for our national security, close quote. Now, in some settings, Describing melting glaciers and rising global temperatures as security risks might be met with some skepticism. But as an academic community honed in on sustainability issues, I believe all of you understand or need to understand the enormity of what we are facing. Climate change impacts issues as varied as disease management, food security, the preservation of water resources, the stability of fragile governments, immigration patterns, and transportation infrastructure. We have already begun to see the detrimental effects of climate change take root all around us. It's been linked to an increase in drought and wildfires, stronger storms, rising sea levels, and the extinction of plants and animals. For all of these reasons, I believe that the task of addressing climate change and reducing our carbon footprint is a moral imperative. It is clear that we must take bold and swift action to stop 
and where possible reverse these worrisome trends. And it's clear that finding solutions for a massive global challenge like climate change will require a comprehensive and collaborative approach by climate experts and ordinary citizens alike. This is why I have made climate change and carbon neutrality a top priority at the University of California. It's why the University of California has placed such an emphasis on coordinating our efforts with other climate leaders, sharing our knowledge with the public and serving as a model for other institutions. So today I'd like to talk about some of the ways in which the University of California is confronting this threat and working with others to ensure a safe and sustainable future for years to come. When I arrived at the University of California almost five years ago, I was also the first woman president of the University of California. One of my first actions was to launch the University of California Carbon Neutrality Initiative. This is UC's commitment to become completely carbon neutral in our operations by 2025. And we are actively working toward that goal. But beyond creating such an operational target, the Carbon Neutrality Initiative has also served as an unequivocal statement to the UC community and to the rest of the world that our university is deeply committed to envir environmental sustainability. The initiative has elevated cutting edge research in the area of climate change. It has created new opportunities for student education and advocacy. It has encouraged staff to adapt more environmentally friendly work habits. And it has enabled UC to forge new partnerships and find creative ways to share knowledge about sustainable living. Here are a few examples of what we have accomplished so far. Earlier this year, the University of California unveiled the University Climate Change Coalition, or UC3. This group of 13 leading North American research universities will prototype a collaborative model designed to help local communities achieve their climate goals and accelerate the transition to a low carbon future. It is designed to move solutions found in the academy to the local communities in which those academies exist. In 2016, the University of California made the largest solar purchase ever by a U.S. university. Since 2009, UC has reduced our emissions by 15%, in part through the adoption of solar and other renewable energy sources. And just recently, a group of researchers, students, and sustainability experts from across the university found that the university could overcome its reliance on natural gas by implementing energy efficiency improvements, developing more climate-friendly energy sources, and transitioning to newly designed energy systems. At the University of California, we have also ramped up on public education. Last year, the university launched a video series called Climate Lab, which seeks to change the way people communicate and think about climate change. Episodes of the series examine the psychology of climate change, the environmental impact of smartphones and food waste, and the evolution of nuclear energy technology, to name just a few examples. The series has been viewed more than 10 million times on YouTube and continues to be shared widely on social media. And UC's climate and sustainability research continues to produce exciting breakthroughs, as well as practical solutions 
for everyday sustainability problems. It was the research undertaken by UC San Diego professor Ram Ramanathan and his colleagues on greenhouse gases that led to the historic Kigali Agreement two years ago. That agreement set legally binding limits on the use of hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs, a type of coolant widely used in air conditioners and refrigerators. It's one of several super pollutants that have been the focus of more than 40 years of research by Professor Ramanathan and others. <coughs> The same research led California Governor Jerry Brown to enact tough new restrictions in 2016 on emissions from HFCs. Three years ago, Professor Ramanathan led a group of 50 faculty members in producing a report entitled Bending the Curve, 10 Scalable Solutions for Carbon Neutrality and Climate Stability. That report provides a practical roadmap for those seeking to combat climate change. And it was presented in 2015 at the UN Climate Conference in Paris. Many of UC's faculty members also collaborate with academics from across the globe on sustainability and climate research, including faculty right here at Ben Gurion University. One example is Professor Sharon Walker. Today, Professor Walker serves as Interim Dean of the Bournes College of Engineering at UC Riverside. But in 2009 and 10, she was a Fulbright Scholar right here at Ben Gurion University's Desert Research Institute. Professor Walker has also collaborated with academics at BGU's Zuckerberg Institute for Water Research. And she's currently working with professors from BGU and Cornell University to find ways to recover energy and clean water from dairy waste. She partnered with Israeli colleagues on a US Department of Agriculture Science and Education grant that included an exchange of curriculum and students between our institutions. I am immensely proud of the efforts by UC's students, faculty, and staff in the area of sustainability and climate change. But what makes these accomplishments even more satisfying is the knowledge that UC is not alone in this fight. Some of the greatest minds on the planet have heeded the call to address climate change and some of them are right here at Ben Gurion University. There are those involved with BGU's Green Campus Initiative, a testament to your university's commitment to reducing its ecological footprint. Like the Carbon Neutrality Initiative at the University of California, BGU's initiative is a multifaceted approach to sustainability. Through the initiative, BGU awards funding for green projects and research endeavors. They sponsor cleanup events and build community gardens. They encourage recycling and energy efficiency. They participate in local and international climate-focused gatherings and set a representative to the 2015 Paris Conference as part of the Israeli delegation. BGU is also home to three research institutes devoted entirely to the study of water, alternative energy, and the agriculture and biotechnology of drylands. This university is involved with two exciting satellite efforts that contribute to a better understanding of arid environments and the effects of climate change and six Ben-Gurion University professors created an online course that explores a variety of environmental issues. In its first offering, the class attracted more than 1,500 students from 134 nations, including Egypt and Pakistan and Iraq. The course is not only educating students far and wide about sustainability, 
but it is helping academics build bridges and spark new dialogues around a problem we all share. It is a global problem after all. As you consider the breadth and reach of all of these efforts, it's no wonder that Ben-Gurion University was recognized in the recent Green Metric World University rankings, because these are exactly the kind of endeavors you expect a university of this caliber to pursue. Indeed, universities have a clear responsibility to educate our students and the public about the earth and how human activity affects it. We have an obvious role to play in conducting research that helps us better understand our planet and how to preserve its natural resources for future generations. Rachel Carson, the woman who shaped the American environmental movement and opened our eyes to the harmful, harmful effects of pesticides, recognized how a deeper understanding of the natural world can help us protect the planet and ourselves. In a 1952 speech, Carson said, and I quote, the more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for the destruction of our race. Today, institutions like the University of California and Ben-Gurion University must take it a step further. We have a new duty to fulfill. I believe it is our time not only to research about climate change, but to lead global efforts about it, not only with education, but with decisive action, persistent advocacy, and close collaboration. I challenge those of us in higher education not to wait for others to finish debating scientific facts and commit to necessary policy changes. We can set the tone and the agenda on this urgent issue. We can march ahead with breakthrough solutions to climate change. We can show the world the way forward as we together chart the future of our precious planet. I ask you to accept the challenge. Thank you.